on, everybody? Bear Bets Podcast NFL Season Preview Pod number one uh, is here. Hopefully, you've uh, enjoyed the college football preview pod number one already and listened. And if you haven't, the hell are you doing? Uh, make sure you get that that podcast download on your uh, your pod feed wherever you get all your podcasts and uh, and check out myself, Jeff, and uh, Brett Sianchia from uh, Pick Six Previews previewing the, the college football season as well. But now, Jeff. I can just see the smile on your face, oh. uh, the the enthusiasm, the glow of, of, of NFL I mean, talk. Yeah, I would say, is there? I'm going to include your wife and children here. Yeah, is there anything you love more than National Football League football? Uh, no. Uh, I mean, I'll tell you, I I watched four clips today. Of Tyler Guyton, the Cowboys' new left tackle against <laughs> against Parsons in training camp today, breaking down the footwork and the technique of Guyton again. He played really well. I live for the one. I need to see this in my life, but there's not enough of it. We don't practice in pads anymore to see the one on ones and and to see the battles happening. So I'm glad we're sort of seeing more pads. Bear, I'm such a sicko. Our good friend, mutual friend, Bill Krakenberger, texted me yep. earlier today and said, "Hey, man." I'm on the Texans plus one half plus two. I think the Bears starters are not going to play. I played the Texans, and they announced the starters weren't going to play for the Bears in the Hall of Fame game, by the way, happening Thursday what night. Be- and then the line flipped, and I may or may not have taken a half unit on the other side, Love plus it. one and a half. The Hall of Fame game, all preseason games, Bear, can end in a tie. They have a three-point middle. So I am a... Uh, I'm looking forward to the Hall of Fame game, buddy. It almost well, did, it almost ended at its high last year in uh with the, we, right? I, I was uh, in Australia. No, not right? last, not not last. I think last year was like a blowout, but the year I think a couple years back it almost ended at its high. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I was in Australia. I remember I was in Australia punching a bunch of crossboard parlays at one of the casinos there, and <laughs> I remember listening to hearing Mike Tirico on the uh the, the I think it was Jets in the Jets. In oh, it was twenty one sixteen last year. Yeah. Yeah, it was. You know, I, I remember having it on. I couldn't. I know maybe there was a weather delay or the, there was something weird uh, in, in that game. But yeah, no, it, it's awesome. Football's here, and look, I love baseball. I love tennis. I love golf. I love horse racing. I love soccer. But we get to talk football now, and it, and it's so great. Season win totals are posted, and what are you going to do with some of these totals and? Uh, there was actually a a good article. Yeah. Uh, if you're into some of the histrionics, uh, that one of my former colleagues, Evan Abrams, over it now with the Action Network wrote. And, and again, you got to take it into account and, and kind of figure out the differences because if you date it back to 1990, you remember only 16 games. But uh, if you're looking at some of these double-digit win total type teams, uh, according to Evan, uh, since 1990. 195 teams with double digit win totals only 79 went over the total so yeah only if you're looking at going under teams with a double digit win total uh, you're hitting it around 57% or so which uh is certainly above the break even mark um but again now with 17 games how does that change things that obviously uh, that's being priced into uh, the market where they're being where they're being set at 11, 11 and a half, 10, 10 and a half or whatever. But uh, are you, when you look at a win total like that, do you take a step back and say, there's no way I'm going over on a team like that? Or are you willing to go over uh, 10 and a half or on, on a team or whatever it is on a team like the Chiefs? I'm not bear. I think NFL win totals are so hard in general. Uh, the lines are are very sharp, obviously, um, and when, when they're set. They're not like college, I think, where there's a lot more variance there in the transfer portal and young players you might not know about that we might have some information on that you think are going to play well. The NFL's not like that, man. You know, like the rosters are, are pretty set. There's quarterbacks, obviously, that change every now and then in the draft, but there's not a big substantial changes in these rosters that I think are so massive that the books overlook them, you know? Um, so... I think these are hard to, to do. And and with quarterback injuries now, I mean, over there, you lose your quarterback for a month. I mean, there were 66 quarterbacks who started the game last season. If you lose your quarterback for a month and you're at 10 and a half, 11 and a half win total, you're going under bear, you know? So like to me, you either bet under on these 
or just don't touch them, or you know, play a play a better number for someone to make a playoff or or someone to win a division than taking them to go to win 13, 13 NFL games. Mm-hmm. You know how hard that is. Um, so I haven't touched it over for a win total uh, in a couple years now of a team in, in double. I think over nine and a half or eight and a half is still doable. Um, but at over 10 and a half bear 11 and six is still a really tough NFL season, right? I mean, it, it's a hard way to get there. 12 and five, 13 and four. Uh, I don't think you are one that plays these over either. No, I, I am typically someone looking, looking to play over. And if you just look, look at last year's, if you look at last year's standings, you had, uh, Let's see. In the 49ers won 12 games. The Lions won 12 games. Eagles were 11 and 6. The Cowboys 12 and 5. Chiefs were 11 and 6. The Browns were 11 and 6. Ravens 13 and 4. Dolphins both both won 11 games. So there were teams out there that did win more than 10 games. So yeah. it's it's not something that I, I think is an automatic uh, under. But but I but I do think there is some hesitation in. In, in saying going over, like, would you be confident that the Bills win 11 games this year? Confident the Chiefs are going to win 12 games this year, uh, even with an easier division. So uh, it's it's hard to balance out and you need to figure out uh, with, with a team like that as well. Like, is there an opportunity early in the game, early in the season, where maybe a team has uh, the difficult games early in the year and maybe you can get in a live uh, win total on one of those higher priced teams and maybe you get a half a game better? Uh, if the team drops a game that probably they were going to drop earlier in the year. So uh, I, I think it's all on how you look at it and, uh, and, and figure out yeah. is there something I can play around with uh, later in the year. But there are a lot of win totals out there that, uh, that I have played, and I'm sure there are some uh, that, that you have played as well. We'll talk about our our best uh, season win total that, that we like later in the show, but I guess we'll kick around. Uh, we'll start with the NFC. Um, the Niners, uh, Niners, obviously the uh, the team in the NFC with the highest win total, ten and a half. Uh, and then if you look at the Cowboys and Eagles, nine and a half. And then uh, everybody's trendy uh, Super yeah. Bowl pick, twenty twenty five, the year twenty four. The uh, the Lions at nine and a half. So uh, Jeff, what what are what are some of your uh, favorite win totals outside of the? Uh, we'll talk about the best bet later in the year, yeah. later in the show, uh, and, and uh, NFC. What do you got? So, I mean, the Rams, I, I think, are at eight and a half now. Uh, it's a little bit juice to to the over, um, but you know they they won they won ten games last year, Bear, and it, on a team that wasn't supposed to win ten games, and now they've shored up their offense line a little bit a little bit more. Right, they they have Stafford with a full healthy offseason. Puka Nakua, Cooper Cup will be more healthy this year. Right, they lose Aaron Donald, surely, right? But they they drafted two defensive linemen out of Florida State early in the draft. I, I mean, all they do, all McVay does is he's won ten. He won that down year of five, but then twelve, uh, ten, nine, thirteen, eleven. I give me over eight and a half there. Nine and seven. I got nine and seven for uh, excuse me, nine eight. I should say nine eight. I even forgot one game there. Nine and eight to me is very doable with Stafford and the roster they have, and, and McVay as the coach. So uh, I'm on the I'm on the Rams. The other couple I like um, in in the NFC, uh, the Giants under six and a half. I, I just I, I I I can't do it, man. I mean, reports out of camp bear are not great so far. I know it's early in camp, really, but the offense doesn't look like it's. It's Daniel Jones, man. Like it's just Daniel Jones and and a bad offensive line, right? And so, and no Saquon, no Saquon. But look at the division. Like the Eagles are going to be good. Um, you know the Cowboys are going to be good. The Commanders should be better with with Quinn as a coach and Jane Daniels as quarterback. So the Giants under six and a half, um, and the Rams over are some of the ones in the NFC. Like and the last one. Oh, last one, very quickly. Um, the Panthers are. Over five and a half, there might be a four and a half, five out mm-hmm. there. Um, I kind of like them to win seven, eight games this year, Bear. Uh, easier division, and we're going to get to some of the other teams mm-hmm. in this division that we may or may not like. Um, we don't like them, I'll just tell you right now. Um, and you know, if they just get Bryce Young, we don't need him to be all world, right? Bear, just average, just be average, be average with 
Deontay Johnson's going to catch, I talked to someone in Carolina, 120 passes, they think. like He's going to catch a, a bazillion passes. There's really good parts on defense. They have a good defensive staff. I mean, I think they can win seven or eight games. I, I need six. I need six in the over. So I like Carolina over five and a half. Is it worth playing Carolina to win the division? I'm not going to say make the playoffs because you're not going to get yeah. a wild card team out of that division. So, but, he, sorry to cut you off. So here's no, here's, no, no. I was going to say, but I think yeah. the division obviously is the worst division in football. Yeah. Saints who were untrustworthy, the Falcons who were a trendy team, and then the Buccaneers who came out of nowhere to win yeah. that division last year. Like, uh, is 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 Carolina to win the division worth a play? So here is my thought on division winners. And we're going to preview all these moving forward. But just my, my simple thought is, who is the best quarterback in the division? That's the team you bet on to win the division. That Seven out of eight division winners, Bear, end up being the best quarterback. Well, let, well, let me well let me ask ask you that question then. In in that, the, who is the best quarterback in that division? Baker I, think it's, Mayfield, I think it's Baker. Derek Carr? Kirk I think it's Cousins? Baker. I think it's Baker. Well, I'll take it back. It, it can be Cousins. If he plays to his capability, but we both are down the Falcons. So, like, maybe this is the one division where it's not that case. Last year, look, Josh Allen. I'm just shooting ball. I'm just shooting bullets Stroud, in theories. Mahomes. I'm, 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 just, I'm just, I'm just, I know you are. I, the, the one division last year where you might say, like, the best quarterback didn't win was, I, I mean, I, if you think Jalen Hurts is better than Dak, maybe. Uh, if you think that Jordan Love no. is better than, then you know, then then Jared Goff. I mean, maybe that's where you go, but most of the year he wasn't. So, like, that's my point. Is like, yeah, I don't. So, I, I'm not taking Bryce Young and the Panthers to win the division. I'll go with them over the win total, though. Okay, F fair enough. And I, I know a few people actually who like uh, Carolina Panthers over over the season win total as well. So you, you're not you're not alone. And some some pretty sharp wise people are are in that in that both boat, boat with you, but. Uh, if we're looking at a couple of overs here uh, in the um, in the NFC that I like, uh, the Vikings. I just have full trust in Brian, Brian Flores with, and, and that defense. I know you lose Daniel yeah. Hunter, but like he's proven that he can coach defense wherever he has been. Whoever the quarterback's going to be, whether it's Donald or whether it's J.J. McCarthy, I would think that they'll start Donald, but that's just me. Well, I, think, I think early in the year they will, yeah. I would think that's the case. You're going to have – the best quarterback in the, the best wide receiver in the league, and Justin yes. Jefferson. You've got a great tight end in Hawkinson, and you got Aaron Jones. Uh, if you offensive look at line, the, good too. Not yeah, good, like not, this, not, this is not, a team good, that, but like they're okay. Like Dara Shaw, O'Neal, like they're they're a good offensive line. Not yeah, good. no, 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 they certainly are. And if you look near the the early part of the schedule, isn't like super super easy, but like. Later in the year, middle of the back end of the schedule, I think is workable. And like, in, in two years ago, they were massively lucky. They won a bunch of games that they shouldn't have. But last year, I don't think they were as bad as their record. I mean, you, you're sending Nick Mullins out there and some other quarterbacks that like shouldn't have been out there. I mean, and they still beat the Niners on a Monday night game. And then, I mean, they weren't they weren't bad last year at all. They were close to making the playoffs. So uh, I think. I think that coaching staff I have a ton of respect for. Uh, I would play over the season win totals, and, and I would take a look at maybe making the uh, and a bet to make the playoff, and even win that division if, if you're not as high uh, on on the Lions or the Packers as, as a lot of people are. And then the um, the other over over in the NFC that I liked was um, Seattle. I, again, okay. I love I love the coaching hire. Uh, I think they're going to find themselves in some better game management situations where they're going to have a little bit more of a plus EV or a, a positive uh, EPA per play uh, with some of the decisions that Pete Carroll had made in the past that weren't necessarily the best ones. Yep. Um, I'm not a Geno guy, but he's fine. You could do worse. I, I think Murphy is going to be a really, really good fit for Mike McDonald in that defense. And the way the schedule starts off for them, like we were talking about a little bit before, about maybe playing yourself into or out of a win total. If you like the Seahawks, you're going to want to play the over early before the season starts because you get Denver and New England to start, two games that you're probably going to win. So uh, I like the Seahawks over too. Again, this is a team that last year was close to making the playoffs, and and that was in a year where Geno was really, really bad. So uh, I, I think Seattle could be a surprise team this year as well. 
I have no, I have no feeling in Seattle, man. I really don't. Uh, you know, I never, we never seen him as a head coach, McDonald. Uh, I'm not high on Gino. Uh, if I think the Rams are going to be good, and we'll get to our best bet in a little bit, my, my best bet, like if I think that team's going to be good, I, I, someone's got to lose in the division, Bear. You know, and so maybe yeah. it, it is end up being Seattle. Yeah, no, because in, in that division as well, I'm under on the Falcons and I'm under on the Buccaneers. I mean, there's so much buzz w- with Cousins, and then you make the bad pick. By picking Penix in the top 10, you don't address what's going to be one of the worst defenses in the league. I mean, I'm a big fan of fading these trendy teams. I know the yes. schedule the schedule's supposedly easy, but they had an easy schedule last year and only won seven games. Yeah, I right. know. You had Desmond Ritter who couldn't play quarterback as a quarterback, but they were right. a, a, an under team last year. I think they're an under team. You lose the two best pass rushers that you had from a bad defense in Dupre and Campbell, and you don't address it like, I don't, I don't see it, man. Like, I uh, under eight and a half, I think, is a really good play uh, with with the Falcons, and I played under under uh, the season win total with the, uh, uh, the the Bucks as well. I, I think last year was a little bit of a, a smoke and mirrors deal where they just kind of found themselves in the right place uh, at the right time. Baker uh, had a fantastic like, year, yeah. but uh, I, I think they're certainly a team that is due to regress. So uh, a couple of unders in that same division with the uh, Falcons and the Bucks, but I do like the Falcons under uh, more than I do Tampa. I don't. I don't know why. I I used to not be a Baker guy. I feel like I sort of am. Like I. I just. I don't know, man. He's he. He's got weapons now. They drafted offensive linemen. Like he got good offensive line. I know Worfs might be holding out right now for a little bit for for some more money, or he's not going to get paid right now. I, I get confused. Only the which... Jets would have taken Tristan Worfs instead of Mackay Becton. Yeah, like Eagles. Eagles starting guard maybe Mackay Becton. Who knows? Um, but yeah, I'm, hard? Well, they have they have two tackles already. You got to play him somewhere. Do you play guard. They might try. They, they, <laughs> have, they, have, they need. They need a right. They sort of need a right guard right now. They're set everywhere else. Um, I mean, he's not going to play at tackle. So no, got, got to play. Got to play somewhere else, big fella. Um, is that it for a, for NFC Bear? What do you have in the AFC? Well, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do it to myself again, Jeff. I remember sending my my Jet fan friends. Oh no, a text early early August. Last year, saying I'm getting far too excited for this season. And we know what happened four plays into the year. But I'm going to do it again. And I think sometimes with these teams, like last year, everybody was all in on the Jets. And now people are kind of like worried about dipping their toe in the pool. They don't want to get or getting their hand too close to the stove, like worried about getting burnt again. I play the Jets over nine and a half. Like, and I think if you look at what they did in the draft, they did the smart thing and they took Olu to help address an offensive line that had some problems. You both you brought in Simpson, Tyron Smith, and Morgan Moses. Like Smith, we'll see how much he has left and can he stay healthy. Like you bring in Mike Williams at wide receiver, can he stay healthy? There are a lot of there are, there are a lot of ifs. Like, I think Michael Lombardi calls them like the the ifs instead of the Jets. Like, but. You look at the schedule, and if they play San Francisco in the opener, and if they get by that, or even if they don't get by that, they're going to be favored potentially in like the next 10 games. Yeah. Like the way the schedule breaks out for them is really, really good. I mean, you lose Huff, but I think Reddick is an improvement there, certainly uh, against the run. And I think the biggest thing for the Jets this year is that you have a legit backup quarterback. If something happens to Aaron Rodgers, you do have Tyrod Taylor, who you can play. Whereas last year you were throwing out Zach Wilson and Tim Boyle and whatever else they were putting on the field, guys who probably in Flacco. Flacco, they would love Flacco last year. Flacco they had two years ago. Last year, maybe they made the playoffs with Flacco. Who knows? Yeah. They won seven games last year with some of the worst quarterback play that you're ever going to have. You just need Aaron to be fine. They could be legit good. Like real, like I can't believe I'm saying this, but like as opposed to like just the season win total over, I think you can maybe look at them maybe to be the last team to lose because like I said, if you beat San Francisco week one, look at the schedule. Like like there's an opportunity there for oh, them to, to win six or seven games in a row and maybe even like best record in the league type good. So again, um, I'm doing I'm doing it again. And I know in a couple of weeks, once the season gets going, uh, you can laugh at me and make fun and poke fun and do all of that stuff. 
But uh, yeah, I'm uh, I'm over on the Jets again, and, and go and go ahead and let her let her rip. J E T S Jets Jets Jets. I fireman I'm Ed section not wearing. I'm surprised uh, you don't have a fireman one, Ed hat section one thirty four section one thirty four at the metal at the Meadowlands. He he was uh, um he was a few rows in front of us. We had so our seats were in section one thirty four row nineteen. Uh, we seats thirteen and fourteen. Yes, I'm pathetic for for knowing that. Yeah, and, and he he was uh, he was about ten rows I think uh, in front of us, leading the uh, the chance at Giant Stadium. So I'm just looking at which which week you're like, oh my, I can't believe I did this. Um, maybe <laughs> after they lose after they lose to Minnesota at home, you'll be like, oh my, I can't believe I did this. Um, look, the the, the it could the, be it could be that, or I mean, or maybe you lose you lose to. You, you, like maybe Drake May or Brissett come in there oh, and geez. beat you, or, or, or Patrick Nix, like Patrick Nix. I said I said it all year last year. I said Patrick Nix too, but Bo Nix and the Broncos. Like yeah, a to- totally it'll totally be one of those games. They, they'll totally lose one. Yeah. Look, here, my 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 honest take on the Jets Bears. I don't know. They're a team that I oh, am geez. putting no money on this year. Maybe obviously individual game weeks, but here's the deal. It's a very talented team. There's no question about that. Mm-hmm. But they have a one-year window, Bear, to win this thing. A one-year window. And their and offseason not, moves kind of showed that. And the, and the NFL does not work that way. It doesn't work that way. You don't have one-year windows to win anything. Nobody wins in a one-year window. The pressure just is so immense in that program, or franchise, should say, to win the Super Bowl right now, that if they have any sort of cracks at all, and the ability to do that, Bear, emotionally, you just go like you go right down, right? I mean, it's a tough emotional season, anyways, physically, spiritually, mentally, all those things, right? And on top of that, it's like we have to win now or else, or else we're all gone. Robert Sala, you're out of a job. Joe Douglas, maybe out of a job. Aaron Rodgers, done and retired. You lose your two tackles. They're older. They're out. You lose some guys on defense. They're free. Like it just, it crumbles quickly, right, Bear? If they don't win this year. And so to me, it just feels like so difficult to put money on a team like that because we don't see that very often. And, 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 and the last point about this, too, it takes extraordinary extraordinary uh, like an extraordinarily um special aura to move a team that loses all the time to winning all the time like dan You're campbell, trying to lose a, a loser franchise into a winner franchise, franchise like dan campbell has done this in detroit right yep. when i was with the lions i was very there briefly in a training camp of 2016 on our first drive of the preseason at home three and out we got booed. I turn around and ask someone there, like, is this really happening right now? Like, th- there's emotional trauma in places like Detroit and the Jets. And you need someone like a Dan Campbell, right? Like an, an energy, a force to get your team out of that. And is that Robert Sala? Is that Aaron Rodgers? It surely can be Aaron Rodgers. Don't get me wrong. I, I, I It can. But Bear, it's like they have this little tiny window to do that. And so that's why I'm just staying away, buddy. I mean... More it's power like, to like, you. It's 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 like the team, the team psychologist scene from the nat the movie The Natural. Like losing is a disease, and like after re- losing fourteen in a row or whatever it is, it's so it's so funny. But by, by the way, you think you think Aaron has open DMs on Twitter? I want to ask him where he went in Egypt. Um, I don't want to ask him anything. I don't want to ask him anything else. I just want to talk to him about Egypt. I, 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 I went on vacation in Egypt earlier this year too. I just want to find out where it went. I think I've told you. Uh, I, I've ridden a camel before. I may have sent you the video, which I think he said he, yeah. he rode a camel. It was top three funniest moments of my life. I mean, <laughs> there, I'm a large human. You've seen me in person. Mm-hmm. Other people have not seen me in person. And I look, I am what I am. So I don't consider myself, you know, I guess a large person all the time, but people always comment to me, oh my God, you're so big. I'm a large human. Okay. The camel just lifted my fat ass straight up in the air and started yep. walking like like I was nothing, dude. Nothing. It was the funniest thing of my entire. I laughed so hard I'm in the middle of Israel, driving from Jerusalem to 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 Masada. We stopped on the side of the road. And I think it was uh, at the the Bedouins, I think, right? The, yep. the, like, the, like a little camp there, and we got a camel ride in the middle of the desert in Israel. Like it's the funniest thing of all time. 
I, I laughed so dang hard. Um, so I, I, I ranted on Rogers not going to mini camp, but at least he had a fun experience in Egypt. Um, I know you just you were just there as well. Um, so that uh, that was a lot of fun. You, you know what's not a fun experience, Jeff? Betting on Mike Tomlin teams to go under the season win total. Wow. I, I don't know if you've heard this little nugget before, but Mike Tomlin has never had a losing season as a head coach. And you, my friend, are predicting that that will happen this year. Yeah. Um, look, at best, the quarterback situation in Pittsburgh puts them third in the division. At best, right? That's saying like Fields or Wilson, and Wilson's already injured, like not even practicing, right? That means Fields or Wilson are better than Deshaun Watson. Most likely, Des- uh, Deshaun Watson is a little better this year. I, by the way, I have Browns plus six hundred to win the division. We'll get to maybe more of that in mm-hmm. other shows, but like that's a wager I've taken. Um, and so, if Lamar is healthy, Joe Burrow's healthy, Deshaun plays a little bit better. They have the fourth. They have the fourth quarterback out of four in divisions. You don't win a lot of games, Bear, having the fourth best quarterback in a division. Steeler fans will throw back at me. We were five and one in division last year, Bear. Three of those wins, twice against Jake Browning, once in week seven, 18, when no Ravens were playing. So really, you were like two and one. And one of those games, I think the Ravens had like an all time terrible offensive day. So I, I just, I, I'm out on them. Young rebuilding offensive line. Corbett situation I don't love. Arthur Smith's offense doesn't really fit. Honestly, Fields and, and and Russell Wilson defensively they're still good, not great, but good. So I, it feels odd to do this finally, but I'm on their under man. I don't know about you. Well, I, I I know my wife follows you on Instagram. My wife who grew up in Pittsburgh and is a very big Pittsburgh Steelers fan. You probably can expect a couple of very uh, profanity ridden. Uh, DMs on 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 on, on, in, on the old gram from uh, from Mrs. Bear because uh, she's not going to like this one. She and I, actually does she even listen to the Bear Bets podcast? I don't even know if she listens to what we have to say. So my wife doesn't listen. This will be a good this will be a good test to find out uh, wh- whether or not she actually listens to us. <laughs> my... Like you talking bad about her team. And I know <laughs> she doesn't want to listen wife to anything. For hours. I have no idea. My wife would have no idea. But uh, if, if if my wife does listen to this. Uh, podcast so she will like my under that uh, that I like that I have here that's under 10 and a half with the Ravens are we sure Derrick Henry is a massive upgrade in that backfield how much do we think he has left in the tank and now you're coming in there so much pressure I think after the disappointment uh, and losing to the Chiefs on, on your home field with the trip to Super Bowl on the line your non-division schedule, you get Kansas City, Dallas, Buffalo, Philadelphia. And I'm curious to get your opinion on this because uh, you would know more than me. Morgan Moses, John Simpson, yep. Evan Zeitler, gone from the offensive line. Okay. Like yep. That's a yep. big deal. Yeah. And you know, lose Patrick Queen and Ronald Darby. Like You're assuming that oh, Harbaugh and Lamar will figure it out. But I don't think 10 wins are a lock at all. And I even played a little uh, plus 240 to miss the playoffs because I think uh, in that division and then with that first place schedule, like like there's a chance they might yeah. be nine and eight. And that might not be yeah. good enough to get them a wild card. Well, I, I think well, you mentioned the roster concerns in Baltimore, which are certainly true. Um, you know, Henry, I think, fixes maybe some of the run game problems they had against Kansas City in that one game if they decided to run the football. But it didn't really change to me weeks one through 18, right? I mean, to me, he's brought in for the playoffs, right? To run in that in the Chiefs game. But it's a division, right? Look, if Burrow's healthy, the Bengals are going to be good. They're the team I fear as a Chiefs fan more than any other team. But the Bengals have shown year after year their ability to play well against Kansas City. Baltimore, to your point about schedule, get kind of gets gets dealt a shit hand playing Kansas City week one, Bear, because Kansas City, now they lost to Detroit last year. That's because, you know, uh, Kadarius Tony couldn't catch a football. But Andy Reid is very good in week one off of a long route. Like They've always been good in that situation. I expect them to play better than they did against Detroit last season. So you're kind of already starting 0-1, which isn't great. Um, and I think the Browns are good, dude. I do, too. Like, and so I, I think yeah, the Browns are going to win the division. The league, I, think. 
I think the Browns are going to win that division. So I that's where I'm at um, with with that division. So I, I think under for the Ravens is certainly doable. Again, we're talking about that, those big numbers, right? Like under feels more comfortable than over. No, I I, I think it does. And, and, and could, could they just be 11 and 6 and have a great year again? But it kind of just felt like everything went right for them uh, last year. And uh, you, you mean, look, 10 and 10 and 7, and I win my bet. And that, that's a good year, and that'll get him in the playoff yeah. here. But uh, we, we'll, we'll see if that's the case. Uh, another team that uh, made a, a coaching change, or they should, actually, I should say that you made a coaching change last season, and the guy that they hired uh, is an, on an interim actually was the guy that wound up getting the job, and that's uh, Antonio Pierce and the Raiders. Uh, you've got some thoughts, Jeff, on there. Yeah. Uh, season total. I think the Raiders are not going to be good. I'm under under six and a half. Who's their um, quarterback? What, what we, I, I didn't thank you. Really. Like that's the point. Who's the quarterback? Like Aiden O'Connell, Gardner Minshew. Like who, who's the quarterback? Um, I, I just I, I I don't buy it. Um, so and they also have the they have the AFC North this year. Does uh, does the uh, that that division? So you're at Baltimore, got the Browns. Pittsburgh at the Bengals, you're at the Dolphins. Um, you, you got Jacksonville this year. Like it's just a you get the Rams. It, it's a tough schedule too. On top of that, I mean, look, how many games are going to be favored in? They're at loss at, at the Chargers, probably maybe a favorite, right? At Baltimore, not a favorite. They'll be favored against Carolina. Will not be against the Browns. At Denver, maybe won't be against the Steelers. Not the Rams. Not Chiefs. Not Bengals. Not Dolphins. Not Chiefs. Not Bucks. <laughs> like just not the, the, and so I, I'm just out on the Raiders. Uh, I like Antonio Pierce. I think he can be good. I think they're going to draft Carson Beck or whoever you know, Shadur Sanders, whoever it is, Bear, somebody in the draft. But uh, I'm I'm off the Raiders this year. I, I'm I'm rooting for one Raider in particular. I hope you lose your bet, but I hope Dylan Lowby, a uh, West Hampton Beach High School graduate, University of New Hampshire. He's from my he's from my high school, uh, running back. I hope I hope he has a uh, a good season, makes the roster, and uh, and contributes. I'm, I'm rooting for my uh, for my high school uh, alum to go. to go on and have a uh, have a career. We're rooting for Dylan, but we'll root for the uh, the Raiders to have under six and a half wins. A couple other thoughts before we go to break. Uh, I think people might be underselling Buffalo a little bit. Uh, I, I think this story about the Bills' demise might be a little. Greatly exaggerated. You still got Josh Allen. I think getting rid of Diggs will be a good thing, and and maybe the uh, the fact that the narrative has kind of changed and so many people are out on them, uh, I think might might work in their advantage. I, I think I think the Bills are are still a legit contender, and I'm looking at playing maybe the Colts under as well. Uh, they, they're another team that really weren't as good as their record was was last year. I know Richardson was hurt most of the year. But and he's still kind of a rookie. But again, coming out of college, I wasn't sure that he was ultimately the guy. So we'll see. I I, I might fire in a a Colts play, okay, under as well. But any, anything else that you were thinking about before we uh, get to best bets? In the AFC, not much else comes to mind for for win totals. Again, I I uh, I just generally feel myself with less of them than college football. I just think it's it's hard bear in the NFL to to play a lot of these. I think the numbers are, are pretty sharp. It's any given Sunday type of league, right? So you either have to pick a team like I think it'll be really bad, Raiders, Giants, something like that, or a team that just far exceeds expectations, like we'll get into our best bets. Welcome back in. All right, Bear. Time for our best bets. First of the NFL season. I mean, look, I guess I have a middle for the Hall of Fame game. So it's not my first wager of the NFL season. <laughs> but what is your best bet for Team win totals for the National Football League because of because of course you have a middle on the Hall of Fame game who who, who does it but I'm a, people who know me know that I am a contrarian better I like taking a little bit opposite of the the public stance on a couple of teams uh, and I'm under eight and a half on the Chargers I think you're certainly getting a a bump here if you're fading the Chargers uh, because of Harbaugh and a perceived easy schedule uh, but this is kind of a total roster overhaul. Uh, after being in cap hell, it just seems like no matter who the coach is or who the quarterback is or what the situation is, bad luck just seems to follow the Chargers year in and year out. 
I think the secondary could be really, really bad. I know the division isn't great, uh, certainly with the Raiders and Broncos in there, so you get some opportunities to win some games there. But what the what they lose 63 21 to the Raiders last year, and the Raiders stunk last year. Oh, jeez, but yeah, like, I forgot I, that game. Jeez, you're right. I, right. I, I think I think look, I'm a horrible guy. I'm a fan. I think ultimately he will get it fixed and turned around there, but expecting nine and eight right right here in year one, I think it's a little too much. I think I think if you are looking to fade the Chargers, I think you're going to be getting a uh, a lot of value this year. Yeah. So this is a, a fun one for me because I, I think that um, Harbaugh was a great hire. We, we actually have talked about this on the show way back in January, you know, like about how what we think about the hire. It's a real mm-hmm. it's a real professional coach in, in the organization. Like they, they actually went right. out and spent money on, on Harbaugh. But we have to not overlook, to your point, the roster. It's not great right now. And it's going to take a year of Harbaugh just sort of pounding the culture mm-hmm. into the Chargers to get them to where they need to be. Um, and we we love Herbert. I love their draft pick. I, I, their draft was great, I thought, right? They got Alt and, and McConkey, and they got the, the line, Colston, right, from Michigan. Like they, they got good dudes. But it's just not enough. In year one, even though he has had success at, at programs in year one, I'm with you on the under here. Uh, my over, we're going to stay out west. Different conference, though. Arizona Cardinals over six and a half bear. When Murray came back last year, they were three and five. Like, and, and of course, he missed half a year, so it took him a little bit of time to get into it. I think Kyler Murray, with the addition of of, of, of Marvin Harrison, plus we're, we're reports out of Camp Paris Johnson Jr., the, the left tackle's playing well. Like, they seem to have this young talent sort of picking up. Defense wasn't great last year, but they can't get any worse, first of all. But John McGann, the head coach, does some fun, unique things on film that I think translate well to his team being better this season. And when the offense playing better, you don't need to do so much with your defense, right? They can relax a little bit, play a little tougher, play a little freer. So I got Arizona here over six and a half. Um, you know, I think they're about an eight or nine win team. Well, it's funny you say eight eight wins or so, because I was going to say, and I'm going to give uh, give my guy Cleve TA, follow him on Twitter, uh, a buddy of mine, a really good uh, NFL handicapper and puts out a really thorough uh, NFL preview, which by the way is free. So just go, you can go to his Twitter feed and figure out how to get that. He has a really good chart in there about why it is it is a good thing to play all season win totals uh, and, and how often like uh, a win total is off by about two wins yeah. or so. And it, it, it's really fascinating. So like uh, if you like Arizona over six and a half, uh, maybe play him over seven and a half at a better number because more often than not, you see the win total be be, be offered by by a couple of by a couple of wins in both either the positive or the negative, and you can get a really good plus price on some good of these. Idea. I play, yeah. I played an under seven and a half uh, at like plus two seventy on the Chargers. Like I know uh, DraftKings has these available. Circa Circa Sports at in Las Vegas has them available as well. So uh, look around and, and find the the, the best way. To, to maximize uh, these win win total bets because uh, we all think we know what we're talking about at this point in the year. But if you're uh, having a contrarian opinion on something and you're right, you're in a position to make a really nice plus money profit on your wagers. So hopefully we did give you a couple of nice plus money profitable wagers here in uh, our season win total preview, preview number one for the National Football League. Make sure you follow us uh, at Bear Bets Pod on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. Uh, and I'll, I'll, as always, make sure you rate, review, subscribe uh, wherever you get your podcasts. We'll be back over the following uh, weeks coming up with some more uh, NFL preview content and college football content as well. So make sure you uh, keep that feed up to date and, uh, and check us out. Most importantly, last but certainly not least, Remember, the less you bet, the more you lose when you win.